there's also the other possibility of uh, like the movie uh, Darren Aronofsky's uh, Postcard from Earth, where we can create this kind of life gun that just shoots, so as opposed to uh, engineering everything. Yeah. Basically seeding life on a bunch of places and letting life do its thing, which is really good at doing, it seems like. So as opposed to like the, with a space habitat, you basically have to build the entire biosphere and technosphere, the, right. whole, the whole thing. The whole by thing. Yourself. Yeah. Uh, you know, if you just, <laughs> hey, the aforementioned cockroach with some bacteria, <laughs> place it in Europa, uh, I think you'd be surprised what happens. Yeah, right? yeah. Like, honestly, if you put a huge amount of bacteria, like a giant number of organisms from Earth into the, uh, on Mars, on uh, some of these moons of the other planets in the solar system, do you think, like, I, I feel like some of them would actually find a way to survive. I, you know, the moon is hard because the moon is just like, there's no, you know, the moon may be really hard. But, you know, that'd be, I mean, I wonder, somebody must have done these experiments, right? Like how, because we know they're extremophiles, right? We know that they're, you can go down, you know, 10 miles below the Earth's surface. And there are things where there's no sunlight. There's, you know, the conditions are so extreme. And there's lots of microbes having a great time yeah. living off the radioactivity, you know, in the rocks. But, you know, they had lots of time to evolve to those conditions. So I'm not sure if you dumped a bunch of bacteria, you know, so somebody like somebody must have done these experiments. Like, you know, how fast could microbial evolution occur in under harsh conditions that you maybe get somebody who figures out okay, I can deal with this. I think the moon's too much because it's so sterile. But, you know, Mars, I don't know, maybe. I don't know. We'd have to, that, but it's an interesting idea. I wonder if somebody has done those experiments. Yeah, you think somebody would. Like, let's take a bunch of microbes. The harsh, the, take the harshest possible condition of all different kinds, temperature, right. all this kind of stuff. Right, pressure, salinity, and then just like dump a bunch of things that are not used to it and then just see, does everybody just die? You know, that's it. There's, you know. The thing about life, it uh, flourishes in a non-sterile environment where there's a bunch of options for resources, even if the condition is super harsh. In the lab, I don't know if you can reconstruct harsh conditions plus options for survival. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, a, yeah. like you have to have the 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 uh, the huge variety of resources that are always available on a planet somehow, yeah. even when it's in super harsh conditions. So that so that's actually not a trivial experience. Experiment. And I wouldn't even, if somebody did that experiment in the lab, I'd be a little bit skeptical. Because like if, because I could see bacteria doesn't survive in this kinds of temperature. But then I'd be like, uh, I don't know. I don't know. You is play, there enough, you, right? Is it, you know, is there, are there other options? Like, you know, if the, is the condition rich enough? Rich enough, yeah. You know, there's a, there's an alternative view though, which is there's this great book um, uh, by Kim Stanley Robinson called Aurora. You know, so there's been a million um, century ship stories, like where, you know, Earth sends out a, you know, generation ship or century ship and it goes to another planet and they land and they colonize. And on this one, they get all the way there and they think it's, the planet's going to be habitable. And it turns out that it's not habitable for Earth life. Like that, you know, there's, there's like, you know, bacteria or prions actually, you know, super, that just like, you know, kill people in the simplest way. Um, and the, his, the important thing about this book was the idea that like, you know, life is actually very tied to its planet. Mm -hmm. It may not be so easy. I just thought it was a really interesting idea. I'm not necessarily supporting it, but that actually life reflects the planetary conditions that not the planetary, the planet itself, the whole lineage, the whole history of the biosphere. And it may not be so easy this to, to just sort of be like, oh, just drop it over here and it'll, you know, because the bacteria, even though they're individual examples of life, and I kind of believe this, the true unit of life, it's not DNA, it's not a cell, it's the biosphere. It's the whole, the whole community. Thing. Yeah. That's actually an interesting field of study is how when you arrive from one planet to another, so we humans arrive to a planet that has a biosphere, maybe a technosphere, what is the uh, way to um, integrate yeah. without killing yourself or, or the, the other one? Or, or the other yeah. one. That's, let's just stick to biology. Like that, that's an interesting question. I don't know if we uh, have a rigorous way of investigating that. Because everybody, everything on life is, you know, has the same lineage. We all come yeah. from Luca, you know, the last universal common ancestor. And what you see is often in science fiction, people will do things like, oh, well, it's okay because like that bio, uh, uh, that metabolism, that biochemistry is so different from ours that we can coexist because they don't even know each other, you know, right. right? That the, you know, and then the other version is you get there, you land and instantly, you know, the nose bleeds and you're dead. Right? So it's, uh, 
Unfortunately, I think it's the latter. Yeah, is, it sort of feels is, like is, is it feels the like more like alien kind of thing. 